In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to play the G minor chord on the guitar. So as you can already see, the G minor chord is slightly different to the other chords we've looked at so far, which were the E minor chord, A minor chord, and D minor chord. This time, we're going to be playing the chord as a bar chord. So a bar chord, for anyone who doesn't already know or is a beginner player and is confused by the term, you can write it as a bar, B-A-R-R-E chord, or you can also use B-A-R if you prefer that spelling. So a bar chord is essentially where we use one finger to span one fret across multiple strings. So essentially what it does is it allows us to play chords much more efficiently. Instead of having to use all of our fingers to play one fret across multiple strings, instead we can just use one finger and place a bar across all of the strings. It's a technique that will become very important later on when you're learning things such as the cage system, and it basically ensures that we can play much more complicated chords across the entire neck of the guitar. It also allows us to free up our other fingers to create more interesting chords or add extensions to our chords. So when we take a look at our G minor chord, you can see that four of the notes on the E string, G string, B string, and E string are all played on the third fret. This means that we can essentially use one finger to bar across all six strings on the third fret to make sure that we cover all of these notes. Now I know every time I make a video about a chord, I keep drilling in which notes are in the chord, and I wanted to explain why it's so important. So as a beginner player, you might be wondering why I've put such an emphasis on learning the notes within chords as well as the actual shape of the chord itself. So of course, the number one priority when you're starting off learning the guitar is to ensure that you can play the shapes of the chords and getting your fingers to memorize the positions easily and developing your transition skills between different chords. However, by having a basic understanding of which notes are in which chords will be so beneficial to you when you're learning things such as improvisation and soloing. So once again, I will say it, but the notes in the G minor chord are G, which is the root note, A sharp, which is the minor third, and D, which is the fifth. Okay, so to play our G minor chord on the guitar, we place a bar across all six strings on the third fret. So this covers our G, our root note, as well as the G, B, and E strings. So the only other two notes we need to add is we need to add our third finger on the fifth fret of the A string to add our fifth, and then we add our fourth finger on the fifth fret of the D string to add our G again. So all in all, the chord sounds like this. Okay, so that was the G minor chord. However, one of the other very beneficial things about playing the G minor chord like this is that it's very easy to transition to the G major chord from this position. So what we can do is we can find the minor third. So in this case, the minor third in G minor is A sharp, which is on the third fret of the G string. Now, if this next bit is gonna seem very confusing or you don't really know what I'm talking about, then I'd highly recommend that you watch the video that I made on what actually are major chords. It'll go a bit more into depth about the theory I'm discussing today and it'll also explain things in terms like root notes, major third and perfect fifth, which I'm gonna to talk to you about now. So one of the great things we know about the minor third is that the major third is always a semitone higher than the minor third. Which means that in this case, now that we've identified the minor third, all we have to do is go a semitone higher, which is on the fourth fret of the G string, and that is the major third of the G major chord. And so the major third of G major is B, which means that we can get rid of the A sharp now, and then now we have a G major chord. Now the great thing about this is that we only have to change our fingers ever so slightly to create the G major chord and then the G minor chord. Now as long as you're playing these shapes and you're applying the root notes to whatever chord you want to create, so for example if your root note was an A, then you'd have an A major chord, then the simple technique also applies. By removing your second finger you then get an A minor chord and then adding it you get an A major chord again. So it's just something to be aware of and hopefully it'll make your guitar playing much more easier.